all right thanks for staying with us i am kemi olorofemi and here are the news in brief some countries in the international community have called for trans transparent campaign and also all the electorate to exercise their democratic rights by vote the country made this known in a statement in Abuja. They comprise the European Union delegation to Nigeria, France, Germany, UK, Austria, Bulgaria, Canada, Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, Romania, Slovak Slovakia, Spain, and Sweden. Others are the US, Australia, Japan, Netherlands, Norway, and Republic of Korea. They express concern over widespread incidents of intimidation, interference, and vote buying during the elections. The federal government is considering setting up an education bond to finance infrastructure in public universities. President Mohamed Buhari made the agenda known at University of Ibadan on the occasion of the institution of 2018 convocation and 70th Foundation Day ceremony. Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity to the President's Office of Vice President, Laulu Akade, in a statement in Abuja, said Buhari, who is visitor to the university, was represented by the Vice President, Yemi Oshibanjo. Buhari restated that education could not be left to government alone, as none of the world-leading universities depend wholly or even substantially on government's funding. The federal government is making concerted efforts to reduce the importation of finished and unfinished products and raw materials in the country. Science and Technology Minister Ogbonayo Ono said this during the inspection visit to the indigenous industry in a number of states. The minister said that the federal government was not happy that many graduates of engineering courses Causes roam the streets without employment. He added that the government was doing all it could to encourage indigenous um, companies across the country. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has seized 241 million tramadol tablets in 11 containers weighing 180 metric tons. Head of Public Affairs of Agency, Juna Achema, said in a statement in Abuja that the seizure was made at the Apapa port in Lagos. The agency had earlier uncovered 340 million tramadol tablets in 12 containers on November 15th at the port. The container had been on the watch list of the NDLEA since November 2017. They were taken to Nigeria Customs Service for such, based on the agency reasonable suspicions that contain the drugs. Former Green Eagles captain and coach Christian Chuku had urged the team to begin now to prepare for the African Cup of Nation, AFCON, built for Cameroon next year. Chukun said in Abuja that only early preparation could guarantee the Super Eagles success in the tournament. He called on Gunnar's role to commence the search for new players required to build a better and stronger team. According to him, Nigeria has a bunch of talented and sensational players who are capable of facing any team in the world. The Super Eagles qualified for the Nation Cup on Saturday after a one-on-one -on -one draw with the South Africa in Johannesburg. And that has been the new and that has been the news and brief today. I am Kemi Olorun Femi and up next is dialogue.
TV, voice for all, vision for all. Hey, I am Danny Sucre, and there's an essence to staying glued to your TV because Liberty TV offers much more than you have ever seen. Are you looking for the latest updates on news, entertainment, education, information, enlightenment, business, and lots more? Just name it, because Liberty TV got it. Liberty TV is strategically broadcasting from Kaduna State to a global audience founded on the tenets of free speech, human and civil rights. You can catch us live on Star Times Decoder Channel 180 or Strong HD, better still, Multi TV. For online views and information, feel free to check out the website. It's www.libertytvradio.com. It's more fun in Liberty. Liberty, this is Liberty. Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all. Monday, the 19th day of uh, November 2018. Two days after INEC lifts the ban on officially for the campaigns for presidential and national assembly elections. Well, hold your breath. You still have more days to go for the governorship and state houses of assembly. That will be until December 1st when that ban will be lifted. And all things being equal. Uh, this is hoping that we will not have a repeat of 2015 where, for reasons best known to the security cycle of people in government then, they decided to shift the election for a few weeks. So if that is not going to happen by December 1st, officially, bans will be lifted for campaigns to begin for state, uh, state yeah, governors and state houses of assembly. My name is Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader, welcoming you to the program Dialogue this morning, the very first edition of the program for the week from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And this morning, we are reaching you from our Kaduna studios. So, I'm sure the campaigns have begun. The president, the incumbent president, that is it, that, that, that is it uh, President Muhammad Buhari, actually flagged up, I mean, uh, moving to the next level, he termed it. And, of course, he talked about what has been, uh, what he thought would have been, that is not and what uh, Nigerians should expect. Of course, the director general of the president's campaign uh, group, talking about former governor of River State and minister of transport, Rotimi Amechi, was on some platform explaining some of the things. Of course, another leading uh, candidate uh, for presidential election, talking about former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, also officially unveiled his plans for Nigeria. So as it is, it has kicked off. Probably, I think we're still waiting to hear what Donald Duke has to say Well, uh, on the platform of the SDP, among other political parties. 
Well, before we go into our discuss, that's, that would be our focus this morning. We shall be looking at it, uh, scaling it down from the federal down to the state. But on Saturday, you remember, we were here on a different platform talking about the abduction of the uh, Zamfara twins. But of course, on Saturday evening, Saturday or early morning yesterday, those girls were released. 50 million naira was said to be paid as a ransom. Well, uh, appreciation to all those who actually listened to the plea, who actually listened to the cry and rally around the families to actually do that. This is hoping that, well, the government or the security agents will get to the bottom of it. At least let the abductors be brought to book. Let other people in captivity be brought to book. Well, back to our part topic for the day. Our resource person, our guest this morning, is uh, Dr. Osman Abdurrahman. Dr. Osman is, uh, has been <laughs> so many things, depending from, uh, who, from what angle you are looking at him. Doctor, good morning. Good morning, Aziz. You're My welcome pleasure to, us to be here. Yeah. All right. Well, we're supposed morning. to have another person who is supposed to be with us, but at the last minute, I uh, called to cancel and said uh, he has to see his supervisors in ABU Zaria. And, uh, well, we said he should be here to Tomorrow, but he said he will be uh, in Abuja with one of the governor's media aides. So uh, he can't make it. But I'm just stating this so that uh, NBC will know that it's not one sided. We invited somebody from the government side too. Let me add that uh, Dr. Abraman is a card carrying member of the PDP. Well, before we go into the discuss, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we go proper into the issues. Remain with us. Wacheche ita. Me kulada la fi al jamaa. Kumata kasenche me kulada kanta. Ankasenche ana al fahari de ita. Taka senche me tatali. Me samar to kwanche hanka liga iya lenta. Machele tefiko wa kwari wa agiriki. Kasenche watana amfani da magi me tauraro. Me lat anengiriki. Maggie. Dick me sha our kawayena in a chinji me inganchi araiwa yena amfani ne da magi me tauraro wadda aka hada da ainihin wakin soya da wasu suna da rai masu inganci ita ce silan hadin kan iyalinta inganci Thank you for being there. The program is Dialogue, and we are kicking off just like. Uh, the politicians kick off on Sunday. We are kicking off 2019 and issues in the campaign. Our guest this morning again is Dr. Osman Abdurrahman. Doctor, yesterday, day before yesterday, or yesterday, sorry, we saw officially the lifting of ban for election campaigns for presidential and uh, national assembly uh, elections. What are we expecting? <laughs> well, we are expecting an issues-based campaign from the PDP, okay. just as our presidential candidate, as rightly stated, is uh, unveiling his roadmap. Unlike the other side, the APC, in which they are still afflicted, so to say, by the virus of being in opposition. You say in opposition, why you say that? We yeah, saw the president. Yeah, I will explain to you. We saw the president also you. flag up, flag up. I, I, I will explain to you. Uh, as of today, the APC is still campaigning on promises. You were a card carry member of APC I was a until recently. Uh, yes, mm. uh, that was one of the reasons why I had to leave the party. Because after so many years, three years in government, 
In Australia, the average lifestyle, uh, the lifespan of the government is two and a half years. And yet you have impactful effect of various governments on the lives of the people. In Nigeria here today, we have three and a half years of the APC-led federal government in power, which campaign on the presumption of change, on the presumption of the anti-corruption war. But what do you have today? You find that it's a different ball game entirely. As we speak today, even yesterday, the president was more or less saying, talking, telling of us what he will do, not more of what he has achieved. No, but we saw we saw him actually reel out some of the achievements, uh, power, uh, uh, road uh, construction, uh, 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 several others. Give, let me give you an example of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the achievements he mentioned in the power sector. He claimed that uh, the government has moved off uh, generation capacity from uh, four thousand to seven thousand. Mm -hmm. How many power stations have been commissioned by this government since they came into power? How many power stations have been built by the government? Do we actually need new power stations of to actually up the power generation? Of course, it's very... Because we saw even transmission company of Nigeria, it, it, even it, it the discos, is, actually attest to that. It is, we saw the exchange between see, the discos and, the, see, and uh, the TCN. You cannot give something out of nothing. Mm. There must be production for their to be an increase. No, are you even saying that discos? Because the discos what I, actually what I'm said that. To, what I'm trying to bring mm. out mm. is that more of the achievements that you have seen in the power sector have more or less been to the roadmap which the past government had charted. We charted the cost of price monetization. The PDP government, right? No, isn't that why government is a continuity? I, I'm coming. A continuum. Yes, you see, but the government has failed to acknowledge the gains made in the past. It's all about the big blame game Rather than saying that, yes, we are leveraging on what we met on the ground, mm. you find that each time the propaganda you hear is that the power sector was in a mess, everything they say is in a mess, corruption, this and that, uh, there's no more uh, stealing of uh, government resources, mm. and yet the government keeps on borrowing, the government keeps on claiming that uh, funds have been recovered, and keeps on taking loans, and keeps on, you know, not only taking loans, we are still having issues of corruption at the highest level of governance. Well, Take the issue of Babachi. Wait, the issue of Babachi is there for you to Babachi say. Is, is being, is, people will say Babachi is being uh, investigated as it is. Investigated for how many years? Well, is, is that the fault I, of the president? I'm coming. Investigated for how many years? Is that the fault for one of the, year? Is what the does fault, it take? Is that the, the fault of the president? And even when you talk about Babachi, hmm. I, wish to, I wish to refresh your memory hmm. that if not for the insistence of the National Assembly, particularly the report of the Senate Committee led by Shea Usaini. Who was then in APC. Who that indicted mm. Babachir. Mm. The matter would have been swept below the carpet. Well, if, if, uh, that if, is if, one. If you get and to today, to say that. the same Babachir mm. is the coordinator of the presidential campaign, no, not it, it, yes, because was Mr. President. People will say, well, he's not, he's not been, he's not, he's not, I mean, he's not been found one thing yet. If, but Babachir, if, if Babachir were to be a member of the PDP, yeah. by now, mm. by now, mm. he will have been prosecuted. Who, can you give us an example of who was prosecuted? Because he's a PDP. You can see, you can take the case of Fayoshi, for we, instance. We saw Dari, who is we, pulling his feet in the prison. The isn't issue, the the issue, of, the issue of Darie's trial, mm. the processes against Darie had commenced right from the days of the PDP. Mm. Darie Inyame, mm. these two com uh, people, that persons that have been convicted, mm. their trials had commenced right from the PDP days. So the gains that uh, the APC is claiming to have made, mm. you know, in terms of prosecution of uh, people, governors that have in one way or the other, you know, looted from the public kitty, it's not true. Uh, doctor, are you saying that if, if for example, the PDP comes to power tomorrow, yes. and Fayoshi is found wanting and yes. got convicted, yes. the PDP should not take the credit for it because the APC started the process? I, I want to, I want to, you see, there's the, there's the doctrine of separation of powers. It is even wrong for Mr. President to be claiming mm. whatever is recorded in the judiciary. Mm. In the first instance, I shouldn't it also be wrong. Because, uh, because no, I'm, what I'm saying, the politicians to blame. Yeah, me what I'm saying is that the initiation. That are what I'm down. saying, the initiation of mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. 
it's something to do with the executive arm of government. Which in the case of Aisha, we are seeing now. The police is under the executive arm of government, mm. you like it or not. Mm. And that is why you see the way the police is being serially used in the various uh, elections that we've been having all over the country. Mm. So, in the case of Fayoshi, in the case of uh, uh, in the case of Babachir, I I cannot be convinced in any way that the Inspector General of Police has any excuse to give us to say up till date mm. they've not been able to conclude the investigations. On the barbature issue. What has because, the, what the because, IGP, what because, has the IGP because, got to do because, with it? Because the EFCI is the, investigating. No, because you see, the police is responsible for investigating crimes. But in this case, we saw is the Economic and so Financial Crimes the report, Commission. The report of the IGP is very critical. How is it critical? Exactly. Number one, this was a public official who, while still holding office, used his company. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. And it was even a signatory to the account. That is a criminal offense. Which he said was not true. And that is now led for the security agents. Uh, excuse me. Especially excuse the EFCC to investigate. The facts, the, the facts have been thrown up. You see, the, 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 the truth is that mm. even if you catch a thief red-handed in Nigeria, mm. how many of such people will own up and say, yes, I add? That is the issue. But the facts were very clear because the Shea Usani committee came up with facts and documents mm. to show, based on findings at the Corporate Affairs Commission, mm. which proved that his name was still in the records of the Corporate Affairs. Don't oh, no, no, you begin to go that way? If you company. begin to go that way. And secondly, from the yeah. bankers, mm. that is a signature to the account. Oh, all right. So what better? What better? Let, let's let's assume what you said are the facts. When that investigation was done, Shea Usani was a card carrying member of the APC. Yes. The Senate president then was a card carrying member of the APC. Oh, I mean, the bulk of the people who were involved were card carrying members of the APC. Even yourself was a card carrying member yes. of the of the yes. of the APC. Yes. I mean. Will it be right then to say that the party, to blame the party for not doing the right or blame the president you see, for, the, for the, 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 the The National Assembly mm. from day one mm. has not been on the same page with the executive arm. Mm. And that is why you find that some of the infractions by the executive arm mm. is being challenged by the National Assembly. Mm. Because the executive arm is still being you know, held with a kind of military swagger. Believe that whatever has to do with the executive cannot be challenged by the legislature, and that has most uh, often been responsible for the friction that we've been seeing mm -hmm. between the executive and the legislative. Uh, Doctor, will, be, will it be right to say so? Because we've seen budget sent to the National Assembly and stays in the National Assembly forever. We've seen so many processes uh, between please, the executive. Uh, please, uh, uh, and, and so, will the, it be on, right on to the see the executive? Of, on the issue of budget. Yes, will it be right to see the executive? Me, let me take the issue of budget sent to the National Assembly. Yeah. As we speak now, we are in the we are past the middle of November. Mm. By the uh, MTF policies, mm. the budget ought to have been at the National Assembly latest by September. In the past, what happened is that Mr. President, apart from delaying the uh, forwarding of the budget to the National Assembly, the ministers and the MDAs mm. refused to answer queries on issues pertaining to budget proposals. And there were frictions between the ministers and the chief executive of MDAs, mm. floating different figures. Those are issues that must be resolved. The executive sent a bill to the National Assembly, and they expect it should come out just the way it's been sent to the National Assembly. That is not possible. We have the doctrine of separation of powers. Mm, we have the doctrine of separation of powers. The executive could just sit down in Azo Villa, mm. write out the budget, and implement if they so think it's the right. Is this, what will you say? And that is why what will you, you say had the to issue to of the executive saying that budget padding. What will there you is say nothing like budget padding. Who will say if the National Assembly had taken their oversight function seriously, yes. some of the issues they come to raise sometimes in the issue of budget are what they wouldn't even have arised in the first place. You see, the issue of uh, oversight mm. does not have to do with the delays that we are seeing. The delays that we are seeing are largely occasioned due to differences 
between what the CEOs of various agencies mm. are asking for and what the Federal Ministry of Finance has placed in their budget envelope. That is one. Mm. And that is why you have this cat and mouse game of the executives and the, of the, of the CEOs and the ministers, mm. you, know, you know, drawing back, failing to answer, you know, queries by the various uh, oversight committees of the National Assembly. If you remember, it took the intervention of the Mr. President at one time, mm. in which he, he gave a deadline to ministers and CEOs to appear before the National Assembly. Is that supposed to be so? That, and, and that still brings us to the issue of oversight, because I don't want to mention which minister or which ministry, where certain amount of money was demanded. And we met to understand years before such money, I mean, the same minister said not even up to half of that was needed. I mean, it took the executive to actually discover that. If the National Assembly are taking its oversight function seriously, mm -hmm. don't you think it will have even discovered that long before even someone else raised it? You see, the, the issue of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, discovery of uh, money, just like you uh, rightly uh, posited, mm -hmm. There are two ways to it. The Auditor General's Office of the Federation mm. is not being properly equipped to do its work. Uh, the things that uh, the National Assembly would likely or most likely see in its oversight functions mm. are in terms of uh, achievements, in terms of disbursement, in terms of uh, uh, the effect of uh, accomplishment by the various contractors on the ground. Even implementation of some That's what I mean. Mm. But you see, those can be covered up easily by fact to say that this is an ongoing project. Mm. Because there are projects that lapse from one financial year to the other. All right. So let's take uh, another quick break. When we come back, let's scale it down from the federal down to the state. Please remain with us. Europa League is now live and exclusive in HD on Star Times. Watch Arsenal. Chelsea. AC Milan. Sevilla. Olympic Marseille and other top clubs in Europe battle for glory in the Europa League. Enjoy all these and over 75 exciting channels for just 1,900 Naira on the Star Times Classic Bouquet. Don't cry, don't cry. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. I'm touching my gimme to Raru Yasaki Sabuzi. I'm Makuma and Enumi, dead in the English ship as a chenzaba. The Magi, go watch a match to Raru Wachi. Thank you for being there. The program is Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television. And this morning, we are reaching you from our Kaduna studios, and we are looking at 2019 and issues in the campaign. And our guest this morning is a cat carrying member of the People's Democratic Party, Dr. Usman Abdurrahman. Well, Dr. I mean, I, I see this. Of course, let's leave uh, the federal government. But we know uh, it's not yet... Um, time for state and, and, and uh, for governors and state house of assembly until December 1st. Right. But there are issues surrounding um, here we are uh, in Kaduna. Well, before we came to Kaduna, I mean, let's go maybe to Zamfara, for instance. Now, we saw the, 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 the level of kidnapping. Um, just yesterday, these two young beautiful girls, orphans, were released uh, after uh, even a senator on the platform of the APC had to actually contribute 
contribute as much as uh, 5 million naira uh, for these girls uh, to be released. But of course, Kaduna is not also uh, imbued from such issue of kidnapping, you know, all across. I mean, what do we make of this situation, especially as we approach uh, elections? Well, what we can make of it is that uh, the pulverization of the people is largely responsible for this. That is one. You recall that uh, even the Commissioner of Police, Kaduna State, did mention that most of the crises and incidences that you see all over are more to do with unemployment. That is one. Then equally to unemployment aside, that is a scorecard that the federal government in particular and the state governors who are chief security officers of their state have failed in the ominous tax of securing the lives of property of Nigerians. And that was one of the main issues that the APC campaigned on the run-up to 2015 general elections. Mm -hmm. Today, the kidnapping has been effed up the level of kidnappings that you have in Zamfara, the level of insecurity you have in Kaduna State, the level of insecurity that you have in Borno State today, it's an everyday thing. It's, not a long, it's no longer just about Lea Sheribu. It's an everyday event. And I, and I begin to wonder, why can't we adopt a scotch hat approach to these issues? <laughs> what I mean by a scotch hat yeah. approach to these issues, a massive deployment of forces of oh, security oh, oh, forces. We see that because ongoing. as at today, yeah. I know hmm. that we have less than 20,000 troops in the Northeast. Yeah, but, but so, people, what is the so what you have mostly is a kind of uh, approach that uh, you go, the military takes a position, uh, takes an area and retreat, and the Boko Haram again come back, uh, attack again. Not, not so let's take, take you, you back see, again. The military I mean, are supposed to be on the ground for at, a while attributing before this the civil arm of the security, the police, comes in. Uh, comes in. Yes, but when you attribute this to popularization of the people, and people will say, I mean, Kaduna and Katina shares boundary, for instance. Yes. We don't see the level of insecurity we see in Zamfara or we see in Kaduna in Katina. I mean, are we saying the people in Katina, for instance, are richer than the people in Kaduna, or more educated than people in Kaduna or in Zamfara? Good governance is part of it. In Kaduna, We've seen the spate of uh, massive uh, retrenchment mm. that you have all over the state. And you know, in an African society, mm. when you look at a single man, just like you, Abdulaziz, now, if I look at, if you analyze the number of dependents you have on you, mm. I am sure even if you are one with one wife, uh, certainly you have no less than 10 or 20 dependents that range on you. So if you look at the multiplier effect, mm down to the level. A state where over 21,000 teachers were retrenched, over 4,000 traditional rulers were retrenched. In fact, the, 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 the count is endless because up till as we speak, at, at least I know for the, at the past uh, two, three weeks ago, we still had this sack ongoing in the state in various arms. Of well, the I'm sure with the polls, I think uh, the people have to make that statement. But of course, people will say, you were one of those it's who are fact, trying... As politicians yeah. and as people who are, care about the interests of the people, yes. we have to bring this to the fore. Yeah, bringing it to the fore. And people will say, you were one of those who actually campaigned for this government. Yes. You were one of those who went around the whole state to work for the same government. And we fell out because we saw the deceit. Because the promises made by the government were not what is being on the ground. The APC, we did not campaign that we were going to retrench people. We did not campaign to say that we are going to demolish houses of people. We did not campaign to say we are going to deprive people of their places of trade. Because what is happening now is that because of the cronyism and the family and friends kind of uh, uh, syndrome that you have in the government, you find that people who have corner shops are being asked to move out just because of the interest of some cronies in government to put up shopping malls. What do we produce in Kaduna that we need these shopping malls all over? Are we, are we, are we, I mean, are these going to be campaign issues? <laughs> of course, at the appropriate time, there will be campaign issues because people have been rendered, they have been thrown out out of where they make their little money from. 
take the instance of the issue of Malali. You take uh, public land, you give to a private investor. Public land is supposed to be taken to give for public interest, not to private investors. But, but, but Dr. Like what has happened in Government Technical College, uh, Malali? Uh, 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 Doctor, if there are going to be alternatives for the people displaced, for instance, yes. I mean, we, 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 we talked about development, we talked about growth, we, we want to see uh, the places uh, alternatives modernized that, Alternatives that they cannot Children. afford. No, no, because no, no, because, no, no, because no, no, most of these people now, yeah. you are asking them to go and rent shops at the end of the day, mm. how much do they make per day? For somebody who is renting a shop, probably that is paying just twelve thousand, you know, or paying uh, sixty thousand, yeah. you ask him to go and rent a, a shop in a shopping mall that he will be paying five hundred thousand. How much is his wealth put together entirely? No, but, but my question was, I mean, if I'm going to take this place, yes. But before taking it, I say, okay, I'm moving you to an alternative place. I'm giving yeah. you somewhere else, yes. an alternative. Yes. I mean, isn't that a good thing that we should be seeing that this place is developing? Yeah. Alternative, the person that was here alternative was moving, at, alternative was, was being moved somewhere. Cost? Alternative at what cost? Hmm. Is it what they can afford? Okay, that is the issue. It's, it's the issue of whether they can afford. You look at you know the wares that these people are traded on. What is the total value of what they are? Uh, Doctor, are you insinuating that the people who were actually moved out of those places that have been developed were not given alternative places? Not, not at all. Malali is close by. You can take your investigative journalism to, to that place mm. and go and find out. And I know too that the Kaduna Agricultural Development Project that has been demolished. Square. For the purpose of putting up a shopping mall. Where is that ever done? Government has no business. I was saying you want to build hotels, you want to build uh, shopping malls. The level we are here now, it should be for a private investor to go and acquire land on his own. And the enabling environment is what the government needs to create. And what is that enabling em environment? Mm -hmm. Security. Are those supposedly, uh, uh, supposedly... The critical issues that we should be seeing on the ground, which the government campaigned on, we're not seeing. Uh, like Dr. Arnold, like supposedly the hotels website, like the and shopping Mollen. malls yeah. belonging to Kaduna State Government? It is not supposedly belonging to Kaduna State Government. Mm -hmm. But the land that is being acquired mm. for the purpose of this development are government-owned lands. Like the Kaduna Agricultural Development Project, mm. outrightly you know who that land belongs to. Kaduna State Government has no business in, you know, putting up shopping malls at all. All right, let, let, let's leave that. Another issue was um, we've seen uh, a lot of issues raised. Um, one of your uh, colleagues with whom uh, the incumbent candidate or the candidate for the People's Democratic Party ran, uh, talking about Dr. Mohamed uh, Sani Bellu, actually came out and said there were agreements between him and the party, and those agreements were not met, and what if you, he gave reasons, and that was why he left. I mean, what actually transpired between your candidate and uh, Dr. Sani Bellu? You see, uh, my candidate was here in the studios uh, on Saturday. Mm, talking about um, uh, Isa Muhammad Ashiru. Honorable Isa Muhammad Ashiru, the second by Zozo. Mm. And he clearly spelled out that there is no agreement between himself and any candidate of the party. Mm. The PDP has debunked that insinuation. The agreement that was in place was that everybody will be carried along. Mm. But you see, uh, I'm disturbed that uh, for my and Zozo, who was supposed to have contested in the primaries but did chicken out at the end of the day. He did chicken out. He said he because withdrew for your candidate. You see, nobody, uh, take for instance, uh, distinguished Senator Sulema Hunkui. Mm. He came into the party barely a few months to the primaries. And he proved his mettle as a seasoned politician. Mine and Zozo has been in the PDP for over three years. If you are firm on the ground, 
You don't need anybody to tell you to withdraw. But well, we saw Galadima Zazo too. Galadima Ruan Zazo. Mm. Uh, uh, um, uh, what is the name now? You see, we know who, the, who, who, also, who also actually came and said he withdrew. We know. We know, Ashiru. we know the real contenders in the contest. Are you saying people like uh, Galadima <laughs> Ruan Zazo was not a contender? I say we know the real contenders in the contest. Who are the real contenders? The, that you can be able to afford to pay for nomination form mm. is different from your capacity to contest. But nevertheless, we welcome consensus and we welcome the idea of people probably who are able to afford to pay for the forms to say, okay, I'm withdrawing. Because you are making the whole thing to be a neater a situation rather than a rancorous situation if you have so many candidates, you know, on board. But, but what so, do we make of the situation? But I mean, some of the issues coming after up all, now. After all, CD2 mm. came into the contest, even though he's been a PDP member, yeah. but at the time he showed his interest mm. to contest. We are just barely some few months to the primaries of the PDP. Yeah. And he still went on to contest all through. And he did credible well. He proved his mettle as a politician. How are, so, we, how are we sure that so, people like Sandy City will not end up doing what we saw Sandy Bello did? I don't did? think so. I think people like Sandy Bello were, were blighted by ambition. Why do I say we are blighted by ambition? Because look at, at the allegations he made against my principal, mm -hmm. the gubernatorial candidate of the PDP. Uh, just like my principal rightly stated here at the studio, he finished his secondary school from Kufena College. And he had just a few credits that were not enough to qualify him to go for the direct OND program. Mm. We all know that, and it's still a continuous thing even till date. He said he went for students, students who have two, three credits normally undertake an internal exam under the pre-ND program. Which he, which he said he did. Which he said he did. What? So Dr. the issue like, of whether he had two or three mm. credits is not an issue. Well, the, equally like he to, said, equally like to, he said, anybody equally who is interested equally, should go to those equally schools. Equally to, equally to the issue that uh, his name on the wire was uh, Mohammed Ashiru. Mm. Uh, Isa, Isa, Isa Mohammed, mm -hmm. Isa Mohammed, does not even arise, because these right. are these are these are these are these are issues that are very even frequent in the north. You have somebody who you know uh, bears Isa, Isa Ashiru, for instance, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, in the later course of education, decide to put his full family name. No, we always all, have a change all, of name. All, well, we all have no, a change no, of name. It's not an issue. All, all, you right. need to, all you need to do is to inquire Doctor, from the institution let's where take, somebody has finished. Yeah, to, uh, Isashiro actually said whoever is interested yes. to go to all those institutions and investigate. They no, no, coming to the throwing so let's, all let's, sorts of let's, let's leave that. Let's take another quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll go to another issue, then open the lines for you to be part of the program. Remain with us. Muslim, Muslim. I'm touching my gimme to Raru Yasaki Sabu Zibi. I'm Makuma and Enumi, Daddy the Ingan Shippers of Chenzaba. The Maggi, go watch a match to Raru Wachi. Wachi Ita Nicolada Lafia Jamaa Kumatakas and Chimmy Kulada Kanta. Kasanche anal fahari de ita. Taka sanche mi tatali. Mi sama to kwanche hankali ga iya lenta. Machala tafiko wa kware wa agirki. Kasanche watana amfani da magi mi tauraro. Mailat anengirki. Ano magi. Dik mi sha awar kawe yena yena chenji mi inganchi arai wa yena amfani ne da magi mi tauraro. Wada akahata da aini hen wa ken soya to wasu sena dere masu inganchi. Ita che sila hat inkan iya lenta.
Thank you, Fabenda. The program is Dialogue, and we are looking at 2019 and issues and the issues in the campaign. And our guest this morning is Dr. Usman Abdurrahman, a cat carrying member of the of the PDP. Of course, I almost said APC. He was at a time a cat carrying member <laughs> of the APC. Well, Dr. Now, of course, campaigns have begun. We hope to see campaign of issues and not a campaign of calumny, uh, libel, defamation, and other things. Uh, here, we know, uh, I mean, considering what we saw pre-2015, uh, the INEC, the security agents, even political parties, I mean, what do we expect from those people? The people must have to sit up and put INEC to task. Hmm. This pattern of Mahmoud Yakubu mm -hmm. of inconclusive elections must be put to a stop. Well, if election is inconclusive, I cannot do otherwise. Because you see, uh, the rules are very clear. Mm. We hardly, hardly had this kind of situations during the Mahmoud Jagger's time. And people will say we and, hardly had the issue and, of vote buying and, during and, the Mahmoud Jagger people, 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 by, by politicians. People are beginning to see that as if it's a prearranged thing between INEC and the ruling party to have, you know, inconclusive elections at the end of the day. That is one. And I'm really disturbed that INEC is not key into issues that will allow for free, credible, and transparent elections by way of the deployment of technology in the aspect of coalition and transmission of resource. Mm, isn't that the fault of the National Assembly? <laughs> they didn't no, pass the electoral the, bill. But, because but there even, was nothing like that in the electoral but, bill. But even the INEC appeared to be kicking against it. No, INEC didn't. Did so the INEC actually kick against they kicked it? kicked against it. How did INEC but, kick but against it? But I that? hope, mm. I hope, Mr. President, mm. will not, by any mistake or any way, mm. refuse to endorse the Electoral Act. The Electoral Bill is before Mr. President. But I'm again disturbed that for over four weeks now mm -hmm. that that bill has been forwarded to the presidency. As important as it is in sanitizing our electoral practices, Mr. President is yet to assent to the bill. It is my sincere hope that Mr. President, who has always flaunted that he is for credible and fair elections, will not do anything to bring us back. To security, the, security agents? Yes. There's equally the issue of the security agents. Mm. The police have never been this much indicted in terms of their role in taking sides with the ruling party. Where has the police been indicted in taking sides? Particularly in Osho State. It's very clear. Even the international observers mm. did mention and condemn the role of security agencies. Well, yeah, isn't, isn't that as a result of uh, the, the, the way you, you politicians play the whole thing? No. If the politicians will not go vote the, by the, you, the, will the, play the, by the, the rules, the, the, the police, you think police will have the, been that the police, complicit? The, the police must be very professional as far as I'm concerned. They should remain unbiased. Mm. They should do their duty as they are supposed to do it. If the police remains unbiased, mm. the activities of politicians who either try to buy votes or do one thing or the other mm. will be reduced. But the issue of Oshun was not just the issue of buying votes alone. It was the issue of decimating the votes in the areas where the opposition party has a stronghold. Well, allegedly, again. By uh, ensuring that mm, elections or people don't come out for elections in oh, those oh, All right. Actually, I mean, this is hoping that um, even the National Broadcasting Commission will also do its job because we saw what happened, pre I mean, 2015. Certainly. Where in your own political party had to sponsor <laughs> so many, I mean, issues that I don't want to go into. We hope that this time that will not happen this time around. But then, we know Kaduna is peculiar for so many things. We know before now, especially the People's Democratic Party, if the governorship candidate comes from the central or from Zone 1, and normally the deputy governor comes from uh, Zone 3. And exactly, we are seeing that now on both the APC and the PDP. Is there any issue with that? Certainly there are issues. What are the issues? You see, as a leader in any circumstances, mm -hmm. a leader must grieve the geomorphological fault lines of his people mm -hmm. 
for the betterment of the people. What are those? Uh, promote uh, unity, peace, and progress. All right. The geomorphological fault lines are religion, mm. ethnicity, tradition, and culture. Is religion any, any issue in this in this context? Yes. Take the case of the ruling party, the, uh, the Erufai, mm. the Muslim Muslim ticket. Mm. Even from the religious point of view, mm. he has not been fair to us as Muslims. How? Yes. Because our religion, you know, preaches equity, fairness, and justice for all, mm. first and foremost. Secondly, the position of the Islamic faith is that the role of women in leadership mm. is at the back burner. The Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly stated in his admonition to Muslims that in any issue where victory and success is desired, yeah. a, a woman must not take the front burner. Is she taking the front burner now? Yes. As a deputy governor. As a deputy governor, mm -hmm. because take for instance, what is the role of a deputy governor? If the governor is not in, in, in place, mm -hmm. whether by way of absence on health or leave or we don't pray, mm -hmm. I wish every five long life, but this life belongs to the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Should the unforeseen happens, what do we see? The woman will take over as governor of the state. And what is the position of the religion? You think the people of Kaduna are not ready for that? What I'm saying, mm. you see, we should stop looking at the issue of this Christian Muslim beyond Southern Kaduna and Northern Kaduna. Mm. I wish to put it on clear record that the uh, population of Christians in Kaduna State is no less anything less than, it cannot be anything less than 45%, that is one. Mm. We have Christians populated majority in no less than 10 local governments. Should religion be an issue? I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah. We have Christians in Kaduna North. Yeah. We have a sizable population of Christians in Kaduna South. We have a sizable population of Christians in Ikara. There are, we have there are Christians everywhere. Christians in there are Muslims too everywhere. We have, we have, uh, what mm. I'm saying is sizable. Mm. Indigenous. Mm. We have in Zaria, yeah. Usasa, where I grew up, where I had my primary school. It's another example. So. People who are comparing Kaduna with Plateau State mm. or some other states are not being fair. In those other states, the Muslim population in local governments are just, they are concentrated in two, three local governments. Mm. You cannot say the same thing here. Well, but, but, but doctor, I mean, do you think the people of Kaduna are not ready to have a Muslim Muslim ticket? It is not good for our mutual coexistence. If you think it is not good, I mean, isn't that to the advantage of your party? Yes, you it, should take it advantage is to the advantage of, of our party. Why worry but about it? We worry because much as we want power, mm. we want to ensure that whatever will pro uh, propagate the unity, mm and the mutual understanding of all the people of Kaduna State is a, it's an issue of main worry to us. Give it's not just about belonging. taking power, mm. giving a sense of belonging to everybody, the sense of equity. I bleed in my heart as a Muslim that somebody will want to take advantage mm. of religion to the detriment of this unity of purpose. Even in the, uh, in the, in the coat of arms of Northern region, mm. work and worship is there. Work and worship, they go together. Worship, what does worship tell you? The importance of religion in our culture, particularly in the North, is very, very important, it's very, very paramount. So it is, I feel so bad that somebody will come and want to exploit that thinking that he will leverage to get an advantage. Shouldn't it's, we leave that for the electorate? Divisions Shouldn't we leave that for the electorate design? I pray that us as Muslims, mm. and particularly our religious leaders, will not allow an opportunity to somebody who I believe does not have a good understanding of religion, because if Malan Nasser has a good understanding that, of religion, that, uh, doctor, no, he I wouldn't think, uh, I think that, that is hard. to exploit that it that is hard. We for his own advantage in that, that manner. But we should leave it for the electorate to decide at the end of the day. The electorate have the final say. Certainly. All right. Dr. Abdurrahman uh, Osman, a Kari member of the People's Democratic Party. Until recently, he was in APC. Of course, let me place it on record that he was one of those who walked around to ensure the current government comes to power. With so much but he has regrets. left the party now. <laughs> Doctor, thank you very much for it's your time. My pleasure. All right. There you are. Thank you for investing your time with us. Let's do it again tomorrow, Tuesday, when we shall be discussing another topic and hopefully have other resource people 
uh, in the studio. But let me also announce to the viewers out there, the National Youth Service Call today officially goes to come. You remember a few weeks back, we had the state coordinator here, uh, Aji Awalida Sidiku, where we discussed some of the issues around that. This is hoping that the core members coming to Kaduna will have a very wonderful time. Kaduna is a place that everybody wants to be. And when you come, you don't want to go back. Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader, thank you for investing your time with us. Good morning.